good movie, man. You know, it's about Harlem. If you want to know about real Harlem, the DNA of a Harlem individual, you'll understand. If anyone has any questions as to why Nicky Barnes turned and told on his friends, to some degree he answers them. I'm not saying that it's acceptable to me, but at least you can hear it from his mouth. I ain't heard from him in 25 years, and the rest of the world haven't. I'm not trying to bring him back to life. I'm just trying to get some answers, some questions answered, and also let people know the reality of, of, of what telling on your friends is. That's all. When did you first become aware of Nicky Barnes? When I was a child, about 10. Tell me about that awareness and how it grew. And it wasn't like an awareness, it was just always there. It was Nicky Barnes, you know, I, was, I was born into it. So I, I don't remember life without him. You understand what I'm saying? I'm from Harlem. And the people around me were very affected by what he did. So even when I got involved in the project, the majority of my family, you know, their first, and I'm, you know, be very frank, to excuse my language, but it's the way they talk. Fuck Nicky Barnes. Do not bring him back to life. You know what I mean? Let him die. Let his memory die. We don't even want to remember Nicky Barnes. But then when they saw the movie, they realized that it's important because if this guy ever comes along again, you better watch him. Now one I point grew that up was on 145th Street as well, and what? I remember Diggs Den. What? And I what? Small and what? And what? He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, Nicky Barnes, though he went away, he spawned the AZs of the world. Responded to everybody. And, and all that that came from that, we, including... We all, we all came from Nicky Barnes, and Nicky Barnes came from Harlem. Nicky Barnes is a product of Harlem. Harlem is the genesis of swagger, of cool. You know what I mean? We're snobby in Harlem. We think we're cool than everybody. We know we dress better, we talk better, we walk better, we get our cars done better. Just because you're black don't mean you're accepted in Harlem. You know what I'm saying? And Nicky Barnes, Nicky Barnes was the epitome of that. He was the president of that. He was the mayor of that. So what you have to understand is the seduction of this movie is not the fact that that was him, it was the betrayal. Like the betrayal was so severe that we haven't even recovered from it yet. You know what I mean? Like I've been betrayed by really good friends and I haven't recovered from it yet. So I know exactly how Harlem feels because you know, I've been there. I've traveled the world, Do you think that this you know? And every single place I go, there's a different mentality. There's a different way of being. You go to France, they look way different than they live in America. You go to London, they look very different than you live in France. You go to Harlem, you live way different than you live in the rest of America. It's a whole nother mentality. So what this is a tool to understand that mentality. You'll understand the mentality of a Harlem individual if you watch this movie. That's, that's the thing about this movie is you walk into Harlem. You're in Harlem for, for that two hours. You're in Harlem. You want to wear those clothes. You want to party. You want to be at the party. You want to be hanging out with Nicky Barnes and dancing. And you kind of understand the reason why Harlem was so seductive. Why someone as intelligent and as bright and strategic as that was so arrogant to say, yo, I'm selling drugs and I'm not even gonna hide it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna floss, I'm gonna let everybody know I'm the best that does it. It's because there was a party every day that he was showing off for. There was a stage that was set. Because again, there, he wasn't the only gangster that was doing it. He just the only one that wanted to tell everybody. And the reason why he thought he could do that because he was so good that he didn't feel he could get caught. He got framed. He did not get caught selling drugs forthright. He's not saying he didn't, but the government did not do the right thing. They didn't put, they cheated, but they wanted him in jail. And that also tells you, you could be the best at what you do. You could sell drugs and do it so well that you won't get caught, but they'll still put your ass in jail. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because if you embarrass the government, they're gonna do what they got to do regardless. And that's another lesson in this. Don't ever think you're too good not to get caught because they'll cheat. Because nobody plays fair, not the cops or the gangsters. In this game, it's kill or be killed. And then he got a hold of American Gangster, the script, uh, and he was uh, outraged at what he saw as how Hollywood was going to render uh, this era. I think, I think that's the real reason. Yeah. The poetry and all that, I think it's just strictly because he knows what he was in history, and he ended up being a snitch. And he knows what Frank Lucas was in history, and there's no way in the world he was going to let Frank Lucas take his shot. Just, you understand what I'm saying? There's no way in the world Frank Lucas, because he snitched too. He's like, that's not fair. I snitched, he snitched, he shouldn't be glorified. Denzel should not be playing him, Denzel should be playing me. So that's the reason why he came up. I yeah, I mean, the first thing he said when Mary Jane and I sat down in the hotel room, you know, in, in some undisclosed location, uh, was, have you read American Gangster? And uh, I, we had, and uh, he just went off. You know, Hollywood is full of bull, you know, they want to make a Steven Seagal movie, I want to make a Steven Spielberg film, it's an epic, it's Harlem, it's not some country yokels from South Carolina. You could just feel he was enraged. 
you know, that this was going to be the popular culture version of what went down in the 70s. And, I, uh, like, a, like he was content with not saying anything because he was like, all right, I snitched and I got to eat that. Now I won't have my place in history. The movies won't get made about me. I won't say nothing. But then in his mind, he's like, yo, Frank Luger snitched too. He's going to be able to go down this year as the man? Never that. It kind of shows that he only became a snitch because his right he revenge because someone else they were doing what wrong. Right. So we're we're, and, and what we're taught is that it don't matter what it is. It don't it don't is no place for snitching no matter what. And if you if you look at the movie, the person that did the bad thing to him, all right, mm -hmm. let's say it was acceptable, even though it's not. Why did seventy other people have to go to get the one guy? So to me, it seems like bullshit. You understand? Like, mm -hmm. also, he's intelligent enough to smoke screen with something when he has another intention. Mm -hmm. Just like he might have said, "Oh, I love poetry." Nah, it's not about poetry. <laughs> he ain't fuck with Mark because of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? He fucked with Mark because Mark's the only one that's gonna give him a platform because Frank Lucas had a bigger platform. Which we never even knew about. Most of us didn't know about Frank Lucas, but he was. I, 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 I liked his way. You know, I didn't like what he did. His way, where in the movie? Yeah, in the movie. Yeah. But it's a movie. That wasn't his way in real life. I was told you <laughs> What was his way in real life? I was told that he's well, in a wheelchair now. I, I recently saw a tape, because I didn't know shit about Frank Lucas until I read about it in right. Vanity Fair. But I recently saw a tape of Nicky Barnes and Frank Lucas, and everything Nicky Barnes said was right. The way he talked, you know, he was talking to Nicky, Nicky, you know, man, like, you, you could tell that he didn't have any organization skills. It just sounded like Frank Lucas had courage. It didn't feel like he had any swagger. It just felt like he just was a person that had muscle. You know what I'm saying? But Nicky Barnes was an intellectual, you know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why he was able to lead. You know Dave, Damon is talking about uh, Mary Jane put together, uh, New York Magazine's going to have a piece next week, uh, brought uh, Frank Lucas up to our office uh, and put him on the phone with Nicky Barnes, and they talked for the first time in 35 years. So Mr. Untouchable and Mr. American Gangster had quite a little powwow. Uh, and it was a fascinating exchange, um, and certainly the Frank Lucas, at least that we've met, is certainly is nothing like what you saw on the screen in American Gangster. The role, you know, the way Denzel plays the role. The rule of thumb is, never believe Hollywood, and never believe the press. <laughs> do you think there's ever a time, though? Do you think there's ever a time, though, for some higher moral imperative to to be betray someone that is? I mean, would, if he had had a higher moral rationale, would there have been a thing to justify that kind of betrayal? There's no to justify snitching. Snitching, but snitching for some higher... Not from someone that's committed to the game. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to sit in and tell you like a civilian, someone that hasn't committed to the game. Once you decide to do a crime with somebody, me and you decide to do a crime, I have to be, you know, responsible for it. You know, I'm trusting you, you trust in me. Now you're my brother, you're my partner. I'm never betraying my partner, no matter what it, whether it's a criminal or whether it's real. You're my partner. We'll probably get to know each other. I'll know your family. You'll know my family. You understand? Know and then because I get caught, so instead of me doing the time, I'm going to put you in jail when you believe in me as a friend. That's some bullshit. There's no honor in that, no matter what it is. 